They've called the uh, regular council meeting of the district at Chapman. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you. <laughs> on, uh, at 4.30. And uh, with the uh, call to order and at the opening uh, statement read. The gathered today on the traditional territory of the Treaty Eight Nations to conduct the business of the District of Chetland. We do so knowing that we are privileged to serve the citizens of this community and we shall endeavor to conduct our business in their best interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
me. <laughs> Yeah. Just a couple words. It's nothing that I plan to stick around for 40 plus years. Uh, when I started the volunteer fire department years ago, when me and my wife first got married, uh, and uh, it just turned out that we decided to contribute back to the community. And we picked a couple clubs that we thought we'd be interested in joining, and uh, here I am today, still after all those years. And I'd like to point out I could have never ever achieved this many years with a volunteer organization like the fire department or any other without the support of my wife and my family. Uh, as everyone knows, volunteers give up a lot of time, especially firefighters. Uh, in the middle of the night, the pager goes off or when you're just putting Alan's steak on and his <laughs> mouth is watering. And uh, sorry, Alan, I gotta go. So there's all those sorts of things. So again, thank you, Carol, for all the support over all the years that you give me. Uh, being a volunteer firefighter. And uh, over the years, we've met a lot of good, great people through this organization, and some of them are still our lifelong friends, even though they've departed this community. Uh, Councilor Deck, I had the privilege of being on the fire department with you at one time. And uh, so a lot of people have come and went through the fire department over the years, and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, I don't know where the years went. I didn't have gray hair either when I started, but. Uh, uh, the only other thing I'd really like to point out is as long as I've been a member of the Sheffield Volunteer Fire Department, we always had great support from mayor and council. And uh, you can't have an organization with good equipment without having that type of support. And uh, greatly appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gov BC or gov.bc.ca. Gov. 
bc.ca. Sincerely. Uh, Peaks District Development Services. So that was uh, doing with our B1. District of Chapel Bylaw number 146202 uh, 2022. Staff? If we could please have um, an opportunity for public input just before that. Okay, uh, Michelle. The dist uh, District of Chapel Highway Closure Bylaw number public comment period. This portion of the regular council meeting is set aside to allow the public comment on the proposed district of Chaplin Highway Closure number 1146-2022. This is not a formal public hearing process, but a rather an informal process. I will, however, ask each person who wishes to speak to state their name and residential, residential or business address, and then provide council with comments. I will now ask if there are any comments from the public on the proposed district of Chapman Highway closure by law number 1146, 2022. Do we have any public online? Yeah. No, okay. Are there any further comments? Hearing no further comments, I de declare the public proceedings concluded. Okay, Councillor Ford. Motion to adopt. Uh, Sorry. Any discussion? Not hearing any. Those in favor? Any objections? Not hearing any. Passes. B2. District of Chapman Solid Waste Collection and Disposal Service Amendment Bylaw Number 1147-2021 requires first and second and third readings. No, sir. This is part of the um, opportunity for public input. Or is this oh, no. This is the third. Okay. I will make first, second, first, second, third. Second. Discussion? Councilor Galbraith? Oh, no, sorry. I'm oh, that's it. Yeah, no, no question. Okay. Those in favor? Any opposed? Carry. Committee reports. Do we have any committee reports? Councilor Rubeck? Yes, sir. Uh, Part one, we had a, uh, a meeting at the uh, Public Library for the community, uh, I guess. It's called the first time I had it. And uh, we're starting to pick up here. We'll see you next year. It's moving along for a quick one. Sounds good. It looks good. Very exciting. It is exciting. Any other uh, reports? Jocelyn, your worship? Yes. Hi, Mayor Boyd, Mayor. Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, Council Bishop. Okay, I just want to uh, make it official for those of you who haven't seen it on Facebook yet. The uh, annual Chetland International Chainsaw Carving competition for 2022 is a go. And Chris and the rest of the board are very much looking forward to jumping in and they've probably been in contact with everybody already. 
Excellent. Thank you very much for that. That's uh, one of the big things that Chapman is known for throughout the world, and uh, hopefully we get back on that uh, same uh, trajectory that uh, we've always been on with. People go through our community, Jocelyn, and uh, as uh, Chainsaw Carbon Capital of the World, and uh, it goes throughout the whole year now. It doesn't just stop in the summer. People stop in the winter and track to these uh, uh, carvings and just to take a picture or find out what they are about. So uh, yeah, it's uh, great news. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and I agree. It's excellent news. Mm -hmm. Any other reports? Okay. Not uh, hearing any discussion. Your worship. Yes. Oh, accept reports. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would make that motion to accept the reports if you don't have a report. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. I'll that. Okay. All those in favor? Set reports. Any opposed? Carry. Discussion items. Local Government Leadership Academy uh, information. I would make that motion that the council authorize all members of council to attend the Local Government Leadership Academy 2022 Leadership Forum in Richmond, BC, April 6 to the 8th, 2022. Second. Okay. Discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Carry. North Central Government Association and the NCLGA. I'll make that motion the council authorize all members of council to attend the 2022 NCLGA Association AGM Convention in Fort St. John, May 3rd to the 5th, 2022. I have a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Gary. Soto First Nation Composting Proposal Letter of Support. I would make that motion that Council provide a letter of support for Soto First Nation's Regional Composting Proposal. Second. Discussion? Councilor Beck? No. So, I think quite a bit. So, if a person wants their stuff picked up, but this, they pay a fee and then they come and pick it up. Is that correct? Um, from the preliminary planning, I think they're going to start slowly and introduce it into Soto and then open up that opportunity for pickup and drop-offs, but they're just working on the proposal planning right now. Okay. And it is a fee structure, I believe. And, and it's a voluntary fee structure that you um, I didn't understand that part of it because they want to start within the community and then offer it outside. So I would imagine there would be a fee for dumping and picking up, or we might be able to partner with them, but we didn't really get into the, all those components yet just because they wanted to start, but it's very exciting and there's definitely grants and opportunities for this proposal for regional support. Thank you. So if, once uh, they do uh, get all this, then we'll get those details from them and we will uh, Fee structure may change too, depending on the grants that they're able to obtain, and, and we'd be happy to help them with the process as well. Okay, very good. Any more discussion? Uh, what would the support letter, uh, is that what we're, they're asking? What would that look like? Do we have an idea of uh, what's needed? Yes, just the, just the basic template of the letter of support that we support their initiative and that will help wherever possible. Okay. Is that sufficient enough, Council? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Support letter? Any opposed? Carry. Correspondence. C1, letter 
from the BC Association of Farmers and Markets. Large markets. I would like to pull that one if I could, please. Okay. C1, C2. Email from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs, dated February uh, 22nd, 2022. Message from the Honorable Josie Osborne, Minister of Municipal Affairs, February 2022 Regional Meeting. Motion, motion to receive C2. Second. We've got a motion on the floor. Receive all those in favor. C2. Any opposed? Carry. Okay, C1. Um, so with C1, I just, I, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the program might be in jeopardy if they're asking for a letter of support. Um, this was a, this was a, um, an agreement between Tansy and the uh, BC Association of Farmer, Farmers Markets. And I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with this program, but they give vouchers to low income seniors and it's subsidized. And I think it's important that we continue that. Like I said, I, just, I don't know if they're in jeopardy or not, but just in case. I would, I would like to make a motion to, to send a letter of support that we would support them in their um, partnership with Tampa. And you uh, bring up a very valuable question that we should be uh, uh, proposed to the, them if, if they are, right? Right. Because if, if they are, then we need to, to step up what we need to do to get uh, them so that they aren't. But maybe it's just the information that they're giving us so that we can support them through a letter. But let's uh, make sure that we know and understand what's going on. With that. Carol? Um, I'll look into it, but for sure, I'm going to support sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Okay. I made the motion. Yeah. Made the motion and, uh, sorry. Yeah. There we go. And discussion? Any more discussion? Okay. I guess we discussed it prior, right? <laughs> All those in favor? Any opposed? Carry. Information items, one, I want to, I three. Only receive. Second. Information items, uh, receive one, three. Any discussion on them? Okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Reports for action, RA1, walking trail resurfacing and expansion. Portion of the trails that are getting done by this company for 88,000, right in front of the rec center. No, on the mapping. 
It's everything from lights to lights. And oh, so it's not the, just the red. And including the brand new walkway proposed for, in front of the recreation center. Okay. And I just recently received um, notification from NDIT that we were successful in our application. So $30,000 will be awarded to this program for funded. Awesome. Thank you. The red is just new, right? Correct. The, the red is new. The other is existing, so it'll be resurfacing. And then it depends on what's underneath, but that's the plan. Thank you. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Pine Valley Exhibition Park Outdoor Riding Air Arena Upgrade. I would make that motion that Council approve the application from the Pine Valley Exhibition Park Outdoor Riding Arena Upgrade to NDIT for Community Development Funding for Recreational Infrastructure. Recreation Infrastructure. Sorry. Discussion. Any, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Any reports? Okay, let's uh, go to new business. And with the moose hunt presented by Councillor uh, Deck. Now it is um, block of the draw, right? It's a random block of the draw. Maybe reducing the number of limited entries and making it to one area. Yeah, applications. Yeah, limiting the number of applications. Yeah. And making it just for one area eligible instead of opening it up for the entire province. Oh, I see. Right. right. It's no different now.
just about talk about just about everything that we've tried to advocate for in the last little while. That the voice of uh, our community, Fort St. John, Tumblr, Dawson Creek, I can name them all, that we're limited in what we can uh, do because the population does not support us. And when that happens, we are in, in difficulty, to say the least. And Councilor Gallup brought to your point of, yes, let's keep them out. And then we start restricting ourselves from moving in our province. So it, it's a very uh, hard thing to think about when we have ourselves as outdoors people and we can't go out there and, uh, uh, and enjoy the outdoors. And just one other point for Councillor Deck that substance of some hunters is important. They supplement their meat or beef, sheep, or whatever they, they have with moose. And that's been here for years. It's been historic here in this uh, community and others, where some people have the moose in their fridge to last them till the next year. So, you know, we, we are giving ourselves, I think it is, uh, I think a percentage of people get their limited entries in our uh, in our uh, province or our northeast part of the province, and now it's getting smaller. It's going to be real small, and I, for one, are. It's very hard for for us to be uh, advocates if the vote is against us. So we have to have the people that are doing this come down and visit and making sure that they're part of our community. Even for the, the week, come and talk to our hunters, come and talk to uh, us, come and give us a, their opinion on it so that we can at least give them our opinion. And our truth, the truth that we have here, that we live in this community for these reasons. And the other things about the snowmobile and the partnership and all that come into effect when we talk about this. We don't have the population and that's what drives that part of the provincial voting and uh, how they pass. It's like here, it's a democratic system and those who have the vote have the power right now. And it doesn't seem fair to us and it probably won't until something you know, regional happens, like say that we need a percentage of that to be given to us so that we have more than a percentage of say 50 or 60 percent get their limited hunting eggs here in the Northeast and they'll come back to us and tell us a little bit different because that's just the basics of politics and how things work. But you never know, we need to be able to advocate that in a way that the British Columbian people are us, and we belong to British Columbia as well as anybody else. So they are rewriting this hunting thing as we speak. So to give, uh, they're going to probably give us a link and they're going to ask for our opinion. So this is one thing that we need to do as a council and as a citizens, making sure that we advocate strongly for our right to live in this, uh, this community, the outdoors uh, community. So it, it's pretty tough, uh, Council Galbraith, to say that let's cut it off because it, 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 it sounds really good. I, I like that thought. Well, have they ever sent us a, uh, I don't know, um, do they ever send us a link to, to respond before they change the regulations any other year? I don't believe so. No, uh, they, I, they don't, they don't no. come out to reach out to it, anybody to find out what. Yeah. So, yeah. This is just about setting down when, we, when they start sending us information that this is going to be part of, but we just want your input. No, they don't even, they, they don't want yeah. Does council wish to make a motion to send a letter? I would, I would second that.
Okay. On to the next. Oh, we need more discussion. We've got counselors on. Counselor Weisner, Counselor Disher, any input? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. No, oh, I'm all good, too. Okay, thank you. Okay, all those in favor of sending a letter. Any opposed? Carrie, in that letter, uh, could we have it sent to each counselor prior to uh, send off? Is that okay, counsel? Do you want to have a look at it? Sure. We, she'll just email it to us. In the okay. okay, on to that for foreign workers. Yeah, I guess uh, the Hamburg Foreign Worker Program, uh, that's the limited uh, entry, is probably way out of our, uh, our range. Uh, we're not going to get any action out of it, but the, uh, now that things are starting to hold now, I mean, we have a, uh, a, a fairly large influx of uh, temporary foreign workers several years ago. And it seemed to have panned out for the, for the community to start filling in double jumps and they went into, into industry and so on and so forth. And it, it doesn't matter where you look nowadays, there's still a shortage of people. And we, we, we brought some really good people into this community. Um, we're, so somebody has to start lobbying the government to give their head a shake, or the federal government to give their head a shake and start uh, bringing in uh, temporary foreign workers. Mel, doesn't the, don't, don't the businesses themselves apply for temporary foreign workers? It has to go through the to each individual, like AW or Tim Hortons or whoever. Yeah, but they're, they're not getting. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. The council wish the letter to be sent.
So uh, next step, uh, up for legal grant agreement. Uh, this is a two-step process, but that that program, uh, we've been asking for transportation for the last little while. Ellen, you uh, want to mention this a little bit? Yes, um, so council over the last couple of years have directed staff to look at grants and um, this grant here, we actually applied for the 24480. We were fully accepted for the application. It will be an introduced pilot program. If you recall, um, Keith Maisie and Charlie Vassar came to council as a delegation asking us to review. So this will be a um, program that we'll put together over the next couple weeks that we will offer one day or two days a week depending on availability with the bus companies that are local to provide this and see how long we can push it over through the year to see how long we can actually provide that with a partnership with Sawyer's Place, Little Prairie Haven, and the Recreation Center for our program. Question. Yes, go ahead. Would it be less expensive to, to work with a cab company instead of the bus companies? At this particular point, no, I don't believe that we would have the constant timelines to be able to secure when we're picking up and when we're taking back. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is the handicap and accessibility component that is being offered from them to go to A to B. The other thing is the health and wellness for, for example, we'd like to tie it into the recreation center or some interest points that they're interested in for other programs that are going on. So I may come back and say, yes, it might be, but until we actually do this, um, I'm really not 100% sure, and we don't know from the surveys we got, we, there was quite a lot of interest, but let's try the program and see how it goes. Um, I was also, I believe on Thursday last week, I think it was Thursday, um, there is a mobility unit that was being delivered all over the region for people to look at, so I was able to actually look at the bus and see what it was all about and um, see what the costs are associated with that for future applications moving forward. And the nice part of the new bus and the accessibility, it holds 10, but it also um, requires a class five. So that's kind of um, enticing. And I know that through NDIT and other partnerships with BC Transit across the region, they're looking at this. So this is a great way for us to start out slowly and then look at this, because it is only community orientated for in town, not out of town. Okay. Good. Thanks, Good stuff. Yeah, something positive in the world right now. Thank you very much. Any other? I think that's it. So, uh, your motion? Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, can I just give a motion to receive free info? Okay. Motion? Yes. I'll clap it. Any discussion on them? Okay, all those people, go ahead. This is yeah. really exciting, and uh, you know, I mean, you know, for the best, I hope it's well accessed, and I think it will be. It, it'll be really interesting to see how it rolls out once staff has done their job like that, and to see what that looks like. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Any, uh, any public on? No public questions? Jeremy. Okay. 